Uh, good morning to all of you, and welcome to this conference uh, that will be imparted with Professor Yasumoto. And by saying that, I think that no further introduction should be done. He is well known, uh, has plenty of friends here at this moment. He's very glad to be here too. And uh, uh, I am not uh, just going to say anything anymore. Professor Yasumoto, when you like. Can I start now? Good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I apologize not speaking Spanish. <laughs> and uh, it is my great pleasure to be here again to meet many friends and to speak in front of many uh, good scientists about what I have done recently. Uh, today, I'm talking some of the results you have made recently. An overview of emerging marine biotoxins. Uh, I would say many marine toxins are emerging. And so my talk will cover only a few small parts of the problem. And I am a chemist in my background. So I like to talk mostly on chemistry and some detection method. Uh, this slide shows that marine toxins I have worked with just to show how complicated the structures are. And another point I'd like to stress is the molecule is large, but the amount is very small. So you have to work with very small amount of compound to get structure and to determine the concentration. And, uh, let's see. and my first talk deals with Shigatera fish poison. Shigatera is, excuse me, something. No. Okay. <clears throat> Cigatera is the largest seafood poisoning affecting somewhere 20,000 to 60,000 people every year. And it involves more than 300 species of fish uh, covers a wide geographic area, and uh, its occurrence is quite unpredictable. And poisoning is seldom fatal, but may last for years sometimes. And uh, toxins are separated in two groups. Sugar toxin 1B, sorry, I'm not accustomed to this. 1B type and 
3C type toxin. And these toxins were determined from fish I obtained in uh, while out in French Polynesia. So in other part, Caribbean Sea and Indian Sea, it is known that the fish contain slightly different structure. The difficulty is the level of the toxin is very low, but thanks to the progress in the instruments, now we can deal with this very low concentration. However, the lack of standard different toxins are another problem. As you see, occurrence of Sivatera is mostly in the warm water areas. And the toxin I'm talking about today is obtained, represent toxins obtained in the Pacific area. And the toxin is produced by bent dinoflagellates. Oh. Sorry. That grow on macroalgae that was eaten by herbivorous fish, then move to the carnivorous fish. So involving more than 300 species. And the difficulty of obtaining standard toxin is exemplified with my work with sugar toxin 1B the most representative toxin in sugar terra in order to obtain the toxin I collected 940 eels in Tahiti and collected 124 kilogram of viscera that contain the toxin at higher levels and from that I obtained isolated 0.35 milligram of toxin. Uh, fortunately, we could determine the structure like this with a small amount. And using this structure as a protocol, uh, I could work, I could get all other toxins as shown here. This group shows Shigatoxin 1B group that has a side chain here, Vitadien side chain, that can be oxidized during the food chain transmission to have hydroxy group and the other side of molecule, it can be oxidized. This color structure was were used as a reference compound. The another sugar toxin 3C type toxin don't have the side chain. No side chain here. And again, in the fish, they get oxidized. So using uh, 10 compound with no structure, isolated from fish from French Polynesia. I got this chromatogram uh, with agents 6462. And this chromatogram shows the 
Eki Mora mixture of the toxin. So this the peak height indicates the different response or ionization rate. So when we tasted fish from Okinawa, that the place in Japan, southernmost of Japan, routinely, regularly have Sugatera fish poisoning. And only the carnivorous fish were toxic. As you see here, Sugatokin 1B was the major toxin we found. Uh, but the relative abundance of toxin varies from fish to fish. And these are groupers. Again, Shigatokin 1B is a major compound, but in one fish, Shigatokin 1B is a minor compound. So we find toxin profile varies from fish to fish. And in Japan, besides Okinawa, we have occasionally Shiwatera fish poisoning. I, I would say Shiwatera is moving up north to north. Uh, people want to connect this with global warming, but we have uh, poisoning in the north, and all the fish implicated is this type of fish. And when we test toxin profile, we found toxin was comprised with three C type toxin only. And so toxin profile is very different between Okinawa and northern part of Japan. So when we tasted fish from Marcus Island, uh, 2700 kilometer east to the Pacific, then we found uh, what we say that high hybrid type mixture of two types, 1B and 3C. And in Hawaii, we have also two types, 1B type, 3C types. Uh, toxin profile is quite complicated. And so depending on the place of the catch, depending on the species of fish, we have very different uh, toxin profile. Um, this is a Gambia discus toxicus collected, collected in uh, French Polynesia. Uh, metatoxin is shown here in the, in the up. Oh, oh, so sorry. Uh, very poor handling to this. Oh. So, uh, what we say that unoxidized type of toxin, um, but if we look in detail, we can detect hydroxidized type of toxin. And Gambero, this uh, has a different skeleton. So, Toxin profile, this is the first time we detect oxidized toxin in this dinoflagellate. And uh, we compared the toxicity with LCMS data and with mouse biosay. So we used the same protocol to obtain extract. And we also uh, to calculate 
toxicity test toxin on mass virus, say, ion infractors, say, uh, let's see. Voltage dependent, uh, channel de specific cell assay, and compare this with LCMS data with mass biopsy. And we tested six fish of, from the same species of different places, collected at a different time, and also of different toxicity. In all fish, toxin profile are all but the same. So toxin profile is specific to species. And we had observed good agreement between mass power say and LCMS data calculation. So, in summary, we say the fish shows specific, specific toxin pro profiles and now regional variation. And in this case, the limit for detection was 4.25 picogram on column and concentration 1 picogram on column. That is much, much lower than the amount we can detect by mass bioassay. <clears throat> and we can detect, we can analyze using only one to five gram of flesh and uh, calculation shows good agreement between mass biopsy and the issues. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, now we are working on preparation of uh, different toxin mixture. It's very difficult to provide all different toxin to our condition. So we, we like to, to have a mixture. Then, uh, may I move to the next topic of Polytoxin. <coughs> Sorry, I have a very bad throat. <coughs> but this compound, polytoxin, is one of the most complex, one of the most toxic compounds so far known. It's also produced by uh, dinoflagellate. It was initially isolated from uh, polythor, but then we found the toxin in fish and, and in crabs. It was involved in food poisoning, but now in Mediterranean, it concern about polytoxin is More about, uh, uh, let's see, inhalation program. Many people think taking sun bath, taking sun on the beach had problem in uh, breathing and taken to the hospital. And that happened from time to time in Mediterranean coast. And it was also found in muscles in the, some cost of Mediterranean country. So, for example, when I went to Philippines, one family had, uh, let's see, these uh, crabs. The mom broiled this crab, ate the vesicle, and uh, died on the same day, and he complained about very strange taste, and he spat 
what he had in the mouth and a cat sitting under the table ate what he had vomited and died in 45 minutes. So people realized the club was very toxic. So he was taken to the hospital but died on the same day. Um, so I got a piece of the legs, one leg, and got isolated pyrotoxin in pure form. And I got spectral data to prove this was pyrotoxin. And this toxin accumulate not only in the viscera, in the carapace. If when you touch the carapace, the mucus contains very high concentration of paritoxin. So it is very dangerous to touch the graph by hand and touch by the hand your eye. So in one specimen, I detected as much as 13 milligram of pyrotoxin in one craft. And also in Philippines, I met a family who lost a person in the family after having this sardine. And this, the, a boy in the family caught three sardines from the harbor. He and the man had the biggest one. And again, like in the crab poisoning, he complained about that very strange taste spat out. And again, uh, that material eaten by cats sitting under the table, waiting on the table for something to come down. And the uh, cat died, and the man was taken to the hospital, but died in the next morning. Um, the, we heard the same story. In many rural areas, the farmer keep cat or dogs to keep away rats or sometimes snakes from the house. So they wait for something, some food coming from the table. So many family told me the same kind of story. And this toxic species has detritus in the gill. So fishermen distinguish between the dangerous species Sales species by looking at the gill. If you find the detritus in the gill, it means the fish are bottom feeding and have a chance to feed on benthic dinoflagellate. And during the conference in March in France, there came a news from Madagascar saying more than 100 people were poisoned after eating this sardine, uh, including seven deaths. And uh, I got an email, but the material they obtained only 20 grams left of a fish. <laughs> and we have to work with this small amount. And this is a sample I got in the previous poisoning, two heads were left. And one of them must be toxic. I don't know which one. And from that, we isolated carefully toxic compound that behaved exactly the same way as pyrotoxin. And you got the mass spectra that shows the compound is uh, slightly bigger than pyrotoxin, but very similar. This spectra shows two compounds, two existing compounds. 
So, <clears throat> because of the increased concern about pallet oxygen, I decided to look into toxin from Australopithecus we have in Okinawa. And we collected Australopithecus from several parts of Okinawa, and we collected uh, Siamensis and Tentacularis and Obata. And we have determined the structure of toxins from Siamensis. And the Australopithecus are grown in the culture and from Let's see, 2,000 liters, nearly 2,000 liters of the culture, we isolated 9.52 milligram of solution D and A, B, oh. and E. This is uh, solution E. We later found is a mixture of two types, E1 and T2. And uh, the potency compared to pyrotoxin is much lower, but it's still potent in terms of mass uh, lethality. And we like to compare the structure feature with toxic uh, properties. We like to know which part of the structure, what kind of structure is responsible for the activity and or affect which, which part of the structure is the uh, epitope or the antibody. Um, this kind of structure information is very much interesting for chemists. Um, the structure we had for autolocene A, B, D, E was shown here. We don't have uh, precise information about autolocene C, but with most of the structure change is you see uh, from here to to here. We have no no structure modification in this part. So this part seems to be important for the activity. So, you like to know the more precise structure in detail. And this shows the proton NMR spectra, which we use for structural determination. It is so complicated, very difficult to work with. So, we have to break down the molecule into pieces to obtain more. Uh, precise information by NMR. To work with this big molecule with small amount is, I would say, very difficult to work. You need a lot of concentration and good technique. So we thought maybe we can do some work with LC, uh, mass spectra, which we can use with small amount of compound. Because we need to attach a strong negative charge into one terminal part of the molecule, we modified introduced this to the terminal amino group and the 
uh, FAB MS, MS to obtain all these fragments. And we saw we can get confirmation, uh, information about the position of each moieties in the molecule by analyzing this spectra. However, it's very, very uh, laborious step. You have to prepare this and you have to go. Interpretation is very, very complex. So, I thought with the progress of modern technology in LC, MS, MS, maybe we can try negative LC, MS, MS to analyze the structure of this complex molecule. So I asked my friend in Agilent Technology Japan uh, for help. And we started collaboration, but unfortunately, um, when after starting some experiment, a big earthquake, which hit the Sendai, also attacked Tokyo, and uh, the instrument had to stop for a while. But, for example, this is the result we obtained with ovatoxin produced by Ostrovs Ovata, isolated from Okinawa. <coughs> Negative uh, ion chromatogram has very low background noise. So it's very clear. No. And we can detect minor details, I'd say. And by changing the calm again, uh, see. You see this very clear low background and um, you can get high resolution MS and calculate molecular formula and obtain this molecular formula and check the isotope pattern to compare the calculated molecule and this uh, pattern obtained from the sample. So this is very good spectra obtained by negative ion spectra. We also tried positive ion spectra as shown here. It also gives nice picture on the same instrument. However, if we see in detail, we find the P contains many dehydrated ions, a series of dehydrated ions. So in order to confirm this is dehydrated ion, not fragment ion, we need to check each fragment by taking uh, high resolution spectrum. So in the case of negative ion spectrum, it's, uh, we can make more straightforward interpretation. So uh, this is the positive ion spectrum. As you see that the series of the dehydrated ions. Uh, for toxicology, please 
see one of my <laughs> recent papers. And so um, in pyrotoxin, and its analogous could be determined with relative ease by LCMS or LCMSMS. And until now, uh, research groups in Napoli University were most active in doing this analysis. But analysis or done by positive ion spectrum. And it gives quite complicated spectra. Not only protonated ion, it gives sodium adduct ion, potassium adduct ion, dehydrate ion. And as shown here, uh, negative ion chromatogram is quite easy to understand. And maybe We can get structure information if we work on HCMSMS to get more information about the structure details. And uh, I, I think there is an expert in the spectra in the audience, so. I hope to have some discussion later on. And I'd like to thank uh, for your kind attention. Thank you very much.